Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 12th ETP for HPC webinar. Uh, today, Alison Kennedy from the Heart Research Center, uh, Bastian Koller from HLRS, and Jean-Philippe Nominé from CECCRT will present you their HPC centers and their services for industry. Uh, I am Maria from ETP from HPC office. I will be the host of this session, and my colleague Pascal will take care of the chat and questions. Today we, uh, we have with us also Sainal Azimamurti from Seagate. He is also the Vice President of ETP for HPC for Industry. Uh, he will moderate the session. Um, before we start, so this webinar is recorded. You will receive the link to the recording on Monday. Uh, the webinar is in listen-only mode, so you can communicate uh, with us, ask questions via the question pane of the GoToWebinar control panel that's uh, illustrated here. Uh, this control panel is on the right-hand side of your own computer desktop. Uh, you can ask questions or send your remarks uh, there at any time during the presentations. We will answer you online, and actually we will share the questions to the speakers in the chat and we will use the, uh, we will answer those during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Uh, you can also download uh, from the handouts the slides of the presentations. And I also uploaded um, one of our latest white paper on the task-based task -based performance portability in HPC. Um, we will start with the introduction of Sai Nerezma Murti in a minute. Uh, then, then, um, the three centers will present themselves and their services in like 10, 10 minutes. So we will have more or less 20 minutes for a QA session at the end. And Sai, could you please take over the introduction? Yeah, yeah thank you, Maria. Uh, so uh, I'll just provide you a brief introduction of the context of, of the value of these uh, industrial user webinars uh, very quickly. Uh, so I also am uh, I'm happy to chair the industrial user working group within uh, within ETP for HPC as well, and we try to organize some activities. So just a quick overview of ETP for HPC. I think many of you uh, probably already know, but it's good to bring that context in. Uh, so we are an industry-led think tank, and we want to promote HPC research and innovation to support European competitiveness. And we have a strong focus on technologies, obviously, and we want to uh, develop a very uh, strong uh, EU HPC ecosystem. So we are private, independent, non-profit, and we have at the moment more than 100 uh, members from uh, 23 countries, so consisting of uh, suppliers, vendors, service providers, ISVs, and what have you. So a very good mix of SMEs, research orgs, large EU and international companies, and we are very excited to be growing, and uh, we are very pleased to be part of the uh, ETP for HPC uh, uh, family. And we are a private member of the Euro HPC joint undertaking as well, uh, together with BDVA, which is uh, now called DIRO. Uh, and uh, we author many, uh, many publications that are uh, very actively referenced uh, by the community as well as by the commission. Uh, one is the HPC strategic research agenda and the handbooks that you see uh, that we bring out very regularly. And uh, we are also excited to have the new uh, Trans Continuum Initiative that's uh, led by uh, our colleague uh, Michael Moms. So to bring in the other communities working together with us. Uh, and yeah, you can download today's presentations. Uh, there's a handouts panel. Uh, thanks, uh, Pascal. Uh, so you can actually download some of the, some of these uh, materials. Um, so next slide, uh, Maria. Yeah, just a quick uh, introduction and motivation. So industrial use uh, is a very major pillar of European HPC strategy, as, as many of you recognize. And uh, we set up uh, the so-called industrial user working group about a couple of years ago to uh, go a little more deeper and understand the needs of industrial users. So, uh, and we already always felt that ETP for HPC was a strong conduit between these industrial users and uh, the governmental agencies like Euro HPC. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, the industrial users' inputs are included in the uh, R&I agendas. Uh, so today, uh, we'll look at the, pro uh, the issue of industrial users from the perspective of large HPC centers. And we've got um, uh, one of the three major HPC centers in Europe. So we have got the HT STFC Hartree Center and the HLRS and, the, and, this, and CEA, the CRT. So uh, yeah, that's that's mainly it. So Maria, if you can just go to the next slide, please. 
So I will hand over to the speakers to introduce themselves and yeah, let's take it from here. Alison, go, go for it, please. Um, so good morning, everybody. I'm Alison Kennedy. I'm director of the Hartree Centre in the UK, which is an HPC centre which works primarily with industry. Um, so I'll tell you more about that in my presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bastian? So my name is Bastian Koller. I'm the, the managing director of HLRS. Uh, yeah, we're involved in industrial activities on project level, etc. Currently also coordinating a big activity called EuroCC on a national level and uh, obviously not quick in finding the unmute button. <laughs> okay, thank you, Bastian. Uh, you Philippe? Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm JP. Um, well, my sector is rather, you know, European projects and collaboration. So today I I would say I'm rather speaking on behalf of my colleague Christine Menache, who apologizes but was not available, but would be available for any further question. And Christine is the head of uh, our computing center, including this industrial sector we present. Thank you, uh, Jean Philippe. So uh, I guess uh, Maria, uh, we can start the we can start uh, the talks then. So we'll hand it over. Yes, Alison, I gave you the option. I hope it's working well and great. I see your screen. Okay, uh, hold on a minute. I'll just get rid of some pictures so I can see my slide. Okay, so um, good morning, everybody. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about the work that we're doing at the Hartree Center in the UK. So first of all, um, I'll give you a little bit of information about the Hartree Centre. So we're part of the UK Science and Technology Council. So we are the High Performance Computing, Data Analytics and Cognitive Technology Centre based at Darsbury in the northwest of England. So we're in between two major industri industrial cities, Liverpool and Manchester. So based on 30 years plus of HPC experience and long experience with scientific data, we are here to transfer these benefits to industry, to work with industry and researchers to give them access to the technologies and to support them. So we have about 100 technical staff at the centre and in addition to that we have a, a strong business development team of about six people and their job is to go out and speak to industry and work with our scientists to put together projects with them. So, as I said, we, we're there to work with industry. We have a particular mission, which is to transform UK industry by accelerating the adoption of high performance computing, high performance data analytics and cognitive technology as uh, like AI, machine learning and deep learning. And we're doing this through challenge led research and innovation. So what this means is we go out, we speak to businesses, we look for a particular problem the industry has that they would like to address to make them more profitable, um, to make them more productive, to make them more competitive. And we look at what technologies are there and how we can put together a team of people to work with them to solve it. Because we are a science-based organization um, we're, and a government funded and research council funded organization, we are not there to compete with the private sector. So we look at working in particular sectors where having um, a scientific background and expertise in HPC allows us to do things which um, the private sector can't. So the particular areas that we work in are materials and um, transport, which includes logistics, uh, automotive and aeronautics, health, well-being and life sciences, environment, energy and smart regions. So, so everything in, in from um, atomic energy um, down to electricity distribution, industry 4.0 and process engineering. So, so these are currently um, sectors which are important to the UK, which are in, involved in the UK's industrial strategy. So we are helping to support that and working with companies in these areas. A typical project with the Hartree Centre has some particular characteristics. 
So we're looking at addressing industrial and scientific, economic or societal challenges, whilst learning new skills that will advance the UK's capabilities overall in digital innovation. So, so it's, um, it's not just about supporting industry um, using, using current technologies and expertise, we're also looking to develop um, new technologies which so we can continue to advance the work that we do. So as I say, we are particularly looking to develop new capability in our core technology and applications areas, and also to take results which have worked in, in one particular sector and see how we can transfer the use of these techniques into new sectors. Of course, for us, it's important to have very strong engagement from the external organisations and companies that we're working with. Uh, typically, we need their expertise in exactly how technologies work in their environment. Typically, we're working with proprietary data from these companies. Um, and of course, they have to be very, very heavily involved in helping to evaluate the results and let us know um, how the projects are going for them and whether we are, we are going to get the results that we're looking for. We do a, a range of capabilities uh, to support industry. So as I've said, the most important one is collaborative R&D, where we identify a challenge with industry and we're building a team around that. Um, so we have all the skills in place to solve a particular challenge. So the teams that we put together will typically have people from the industrial companies or the sector that we're working with, people from the Hartree Centre, there may be colleagues from other parts of the Science and Technology Council. Often there's participation from academic organisations. So it's really a question, as I say, of identifying what all the skills needed are going to be and ensure that we have that range of skills so we give ourselves the best chance um, of coming to a good solution. Because we have large computers on site as well, we are also able to offer platform as a service. Um, so this is used typically by companies who have their own development teams in-house. Um, perhaps they want to do experimental work on a bigger system than they have in-house, they'll come to us. Or even sometimes they want to do the secret work on their own computer, um, so they'll put the more routine work out to Hartree. So, so that's another way we work with industry. Many of the projects that we do result in the development of, of software applications um, or software assets. So one of the things we're looking to do there is see is the best route for industry adoption longer term to re release them as open source and, and look to build a community of support. Or is it better in some cases to license that software um, to industry or to another company who will pick it up and incorporate it in applications. So as a research centre, it's not our job to productize work that we do, but we are keen to make it available um, so that it can be picked up and used more widely. And an important part of supporting what we do is enhancing training and skills. So at the moment, we are particularly working on intro very introductory and learner training for industry to introduce people to what can AI potentially do for them, how can, you know, how can they understand, for example, what cloud can do, uh, and understand the difference between different technologies. So these are our entry-level courses which do not expect participants to have strong mathematics skills or a background in programming. So these will, will help to increase the pool of people in the UK who are aware of um, the benefits of HPC and AI and hopefully give them a path where those who want to learn more can progress to more um, advanced courses. We've been very fortunate this year in that um, we've been awarded a large amount of government money to set up something called the Hartree National Centre for Digital Innovation. And the objective of this programme is to position the UK as a global leader in the applications of AI and HPC by industry. So it, it's a five-year government investment. It's based in the northwest of England, although it's a national program. It will provide access to new technologies and to people. And the success of the program 
will be measured in terms of what are the economic impacts for the UK. So it's very much about measuring the success of the programme by the results that we have and the benefits, the quantifiable benefits for UK companies, as well as the less tangible benefits in terms of upskilling a workforce and increasing the number of people um, who understand and who can benefit from AI. So EXPLAIN is a training programme. EXPLORE is, is a series of proof of technology and proof of concepts. ACCELERATE is a programme whereby we take the most promising of these and work much more deeply with companies to embed them in their processes to check that everything well, works well in a production environment and emerging technology is the look ahead program for what's coming next in technology. Um, although much of our work is with large companies, um, there's an intention in this program to have partic set up particular regional partnerships so we can support SMEs across the whole of the UK. Um, so it's a very exciting program and will allow us to expand what we're doing um, with industry. So that's all I was going to say today. So um, I'm sure we'll all be asking, answering questions later on. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Alison. So Maria, I think we can go to the next speaker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great now. Can you yes, see, we can see your, Yes, we can see your slide, Bastian. In presentation Sorry. mode? In presentation mode? No, no, you, you are in presenter mode. It's not the slideshow we see. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, I will give you the option again and then you can change it. Yeah, the problem is that I have three screens here. I already messed it up. Here we are. Better now? Yes, now okay. it's in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, now it's working well. Good. I tried to hide all the nasty things already, just in case I have the wrong monitor. So don't worry. <laughs> so <laughs> go for it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I already said, Bastian Koda. Uh, incapable of mute, pressing the mute button and to share with the right screen. So it's getting better and better by day. Um, so what HLS? So HLS is a high performance computing center in Stuttgart, uh, Germany, which has a, let's say, a history of officially doing, let's say, or let's say having been funded in, in 1996. So this year we are, let's say, very happy to, to celebrate our 25th birthday and uh, still alive and kicking, which is good for us. And we, we had a mission at the beginning, which, which started, let's say, focusing on research, but always having an eye on industry as well. If you look at the, the picture, which you see now, is uh, we have extended this now also to work with society and politics, two interesting fields, but especially as the machines are usually funded by the government and let's say local government uh, fundings, it's very important also to take into account how you can support politicians how you can, let's say, support decision mechanisms, etc. So this is one area which we have. Now let's focus on industry. Um, when we started, we started with a public-private partnership, which we implemented at this time. There were the two big uh, automobile uh, OEMs, uh, part of this, this, this public-private partnership. This has evolved right now. And in HLS, we are either going through this, this public-private partnership, which is called HWW, which is a German abbreviation, so it won't help you much if I tell you something. It's about, let's say, like um, high-performance computing systems for economy and, and uh, science. So um, this industrial part um, has grown over the years, and um, just 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 to give you some insights into challenges and, and how we address them. So um, obviously, when you run systems which are used by industry, um, you have this kind of um, fight between, let's say, people which would like to have bleeding edge technology upgrades. Um, on the other hand, let's say to ensure the stability and reliability of the system. So these, these kind of systems have been simply different to be operated. And this means that uh, over the years we have implemented an appropriate uh, operation model, which really uh, helps us that 
let's say which which means that we have to look for maintenance windows we have to do announcements pretty much ahead unfortunately industrial players are always unhappy if they're in a design cycle and you simply switch off the system that doesn't help you much to get let's say a good reputation um so um, and we also always try to understand when we when we procure a new system also what the industrial viewpoint of this is so it's not that we buy it for the industry but we always have in mind also the, the usability by industry when we when we procure a new system security is an important part here and um, this is something yes you need clear access policies and um, what we see currently is more and more that, that um, industry requires uh, certificates especially uh, companies which outsource more or less their whole development cycles to our systems they are always in need of, of uh, justifying why they do so and as a center so we, we provide currently the TSAC certification, this is quite new, and we, we will have finalized the ISO 27001 security certification at the beginning of next year to have to be able to provide this to the, the, the industrial stakeholders and let's say the, the users in general. Um, this also means that we have continuously really to, to increase data security. Um, we have collaboration which comes of some of our project activities where we not only want to let's say um, secure the machines and things running on the machines but also ensure that um, the uh, industrial players get a possibility of um, data security on the on the, the transfer of, of the data to our to our platform which means that we have also to deal with obviously um, performance losses in the in the data transfer because of the security thing but also try to find out how we could could compensate this to a maximum um, what I don't have here in terms of certification is also something that um, HLIS is, is quite quite proud of is that we are doing um, environmental certification so we have the EMS certificate which is the European uh, standard for, for um, sustainability certification we have uh, in Germany the Blue Angel certificate which is uh, I think we're the first first um, HPC center to get this here and um, these are the things which are also very important for us because also the sustainability aspect is getting more and more important for the for the for the industrial players and, and let's say in general for the for the uh, people running such a system um, what we also do is let's say we have a setup which which allows uh, companies to do test before invest activities so we work with them together on pre-competitive things and, and, and elaborate the potentials of our technologies currently HPC, high performance data analytics, AI. Quantum is not yet there but we start seeing a certain interest so we will also be able to handle this to a certain extent. And um, all these things mean that um, we go let's say far beyond the classical, classical uh, setup of, of a center um, where we have a system uh, let's say running their um, software around this. We also put let's say the, the solutions uh, layer on this and we have quite a variety of activities um, as I told you before we have this public private partnership the HWW to really let's say sell systems or system, parts of the systems resources to them to the industry um, what we have is a set of solution centers so-called solution centers these are associations of key players in in the respective field so we have automotive solution center Stuttgart which has a variety of um, automotive industries but also um, research institutes we have technology providers in there we have ISVs in there so th they are let's say an association um, where they start with these, these pre-competitive actions and identify common interest topics and do some projects not always the whole bunch uh, of, of partners in the association but a subset so by that they can focus much more on certain activities and obviously utilize then our systems and services here there's an energy solution center running, a smart data solution center. One thing which is quite new, but where we also see the interest from industry is a media solution center. This reaches from simple rendering of movies up to really, um, let's say, high investments on an artistic uh, side. Very interesting new community, but growing uh, in a pace which we did not really expect here. And um, what is currently in preparation is a medical solution center. So all these, these solution centers are uh, entities on their own where we usually, let's say, are, are shareholders of or part of. And um, this helps us a lot to, to outsource, let's say, this kind of industrial collaborations there already. And at a certain point in time, they simply utilize our, our technologies and available systems. We have CCOS. CCOS is a company, 
the spin-off of the University of Stuttgart, University of Karlsruhe, together with the, the here with the, with the local government, and um, they are responsible really to go directly to small and medium enterprises and make workshops, events to show them the the, the potential of apply, applying our technologies to their let's say daily life and, and operation. And also this helps us because they talk to them and at a certain point in time we enter the discussion, but only if there's really a, a need seen to do that. Um, then obviously there are several centers of excellence on European level where we put in our, our let's say, major, major fields or, or topics of, of interest with the Accelerate one, which is the center of excellence on engineering on a European level, which will help us to, to improve also our services here. Pop for, for performance optimization, Hidalgo is on working on global challenges. This is something which is of interest um, not only for scientists but also for instance insurance companies etc. So they are quite keen on understanding um, what 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 might happen, uh, let's say, in future in terms of, of global um, developments, climate change, um, change in structures, uh, urban planning etc. And cheese is, is one uh, center of excellence on solid, solid earth. We really look at uh, things like earthquakes, etc. So they're, they're quite of, of interest also for the industrial players here. And then we have something, this is the Supercomputing Academy. This is also something which is quite new and is a commercial activity from, from HLRS. Um, here we have a modular uh, training offer for people which are already in their, um, in their work and want to, let's say, get um, trained to become HPC experts. So what they do is they are doing their job normally and uh, with blended learning, we allow them to learn, let's say, uh, in parallel and to, to evolve to this kind of, of, of expert to get then also a certificate at the end. And this is paper, let's say, on payment base. It's quite good adapted now. And, and this is the first year where we see already the, the interest uh, getting getting higher and higher. And then we have the, the projects like EuroCC, Castiel, uh, which are implementing uh, national competence centers in 33 nations, um, also with a dedicated focus on industrial usage and industrial support. And the Fortissimo project, uh, which uh, helped us to, to, to get some business experiments running with small and medium enterprises especially, and really to, to, to show that we can, can provide here success stories and a common understanding on uh, what the potential is in terms also of, of competitiveness for the, for the SMEs. That was the shortcut. Thank you. I hope I was more or less in time and happy to, to answer questions later. Well, perfect, Bastian. Thank you so much. I think we are absolutely on time. Uh, so thank you so much to Alison and uh, Bastian for uh, being very kind to stick to the time. So uh, Jean-Philippe, uh, the floor is yours then. Thank you, Sai. Um, so what we call um, CEA Supercomputing Complex is located at Briar le Chatel. Uh, this is in Paris region. We are south of Paris, already in the countryside, like you can see on the, on the photo, uh, at the limit, I would say, of Paris greater metropolitan area. And uh, the computing uh, center itself is somewhere uh, on the top left of the of the picture right here. Uh, a way to summarize uh, this idea of a supercomputing complex is a nutshell is one, two, three. One site, Briere, and one division, one team uh, for operating, uh, uh, doing R&D on HPC, operating all the, all the facilities and machines and, and many more things. Two main facilities, there is one for uh, global security and defense, Terra Exa, okay. Uh, and the other big facility is TGCC, Très Grand Centre de Calcul, du CEA, c'est une small antennas, and free because we have, let's say, one big system more or less on the Terra Exa site, and two big systems, other systems, on the industry and research side. At TGCC. And um, clearly, uh, industry is a separate component, and this is what we call CCRT, Computing Center for Research and Technology. Uh, so, I will explain the partnership model we have, but well, it's, it's relatively uh, uh, common sense what I am saying here briefly. We provide access to large computing resources through pooled funding. This I will explain. 
we provide integrated services for industrials. Uh, since the same teams operate the different supercomputers, we pool and share a very large fraction of the methods for our resource management, large scale administration, etc. But what we provide for CCRT in industry is slightly different than the research environment, especially in terms of, uh, I would say, scheduling and security. In terms of scheduling, I would say it's in a way more flexible than what we do for research. Uh, I, I will come back to this maybe. And for security, it's a bit stricter, for sure. We offer, uh, I would say, uh, services and uh, security services for data management access to, to industrial partners. And uh, we leverage the proximity of our experts for code, coding, uh, code porting and optimization for training. Uh, there is also the opportunity for uh, the partners and industrials to develop uh, direct R&D collaborations with their labs. This is not an obligation, it's an opportunity. And of course, we share uh, not only our own experience with industrial, but we encourage industrials to share their experience between themselves. So it's about uh, uh, best practices, uh, uh, code optimization, technology work, software development, so, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, this is not meant for detailed comment, just to say that uh, we pull things within TGCC uh, infrastructure uh, in terms of uh, technical equipment, data-centric uh, architecture, mass storage, parallel file system, uh, common backbone uh, connecting all this. And we have separate systems that, that really use these pool resources. And clearly, CCRT is a separate machine. Okay, uh, uh, as of today, nine brand new, uh, nine petaflop machine, uh, and that was one. And uh, this is clearly a different physical system than uh, Joliot Curie, Gen C Joliot Curie for research. Uh, what is interesting is that um, we really uh, pull resources, which is good for everybody to, to, to save uh, cost, money, energy at, at the global level. And we do very precise an, a, a, analytical accounting so that we know exactly fraction of energy of equipment used by the different components. And this is very important for the partners to build them or to have them pay the uh, fair cost of what they are using. Um, so this is uh, a model that has been working and growing since 2003. We started so with four private partners uh, in 2003 with a two free teraflop system. And uh, in less than 20 years, we multiplied by almost 4,000 the computing power, but this is no surprise to you. And we multiply the number of partners by a factor of five. Okay. So this is a snapshot, current snapshot of the, of the partners we have, so it's extremely diverse. Uh, to be clear, we started with our natural historical several partners uh, in energy, I would say, and aerospace. And typically, to the, as of today, Safran Group as a whole is uh, the largest user, maybe having something around 20% of the global share of the, of the CCRT machine. But we have automotive, uh, like Valeo uh, Equipment Company, we have uh, several divisions of Thales. Uh, we have EFP Energy Nouvelle, which is the uh, energy sector. We have uh, uh, EDF, Electricité de France. We have uh, Technicatom, Ariane Group, uh, divisions of Airbus, uh, etc. so on and so forth. We have also a few partners which are more mixed private, public-private entities. And it's not necessarily uh, only uh, industrials, it's also uh, uh, public-private organizations like uh, INRI, CRS, etc., in risk management or uh, industrial uh, hazard uh, assessment and management like INRI, uh, IRSN, etc. Um, we have Michelin, etc. And this is really living. And the characteristic is uh, we are getting more partners almost uh, each uh, semester or year, and they. They are more or less permanent partners. I will explain you the multi-year concept. Uh, and the experience is that partners that come for two, three, four years, they like it and they stay usually for longer. And this is rather uh, permanently growing than moving. Okay, 
Uh, no, you have the technical details if you are interested on uh, about Topaz system, okay? But uh, services we provide are relatively, I would say, standard, like storage, post-processing, remote visualization, uh, more and more virtualization services. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe um, something more original is this system of uh, uh, dedicated workshops and trainings, uh, annual scientific conference we, we organize for the users, which are uh, not made in silo mode, and they are um, relatively open uh, events and workshops, and, but we try to develop uh, extra value specifically uh, meant for industrials and with our industrial partners. So they can participate to those events which are organized on the research side and more or less conversely, but we really uh, want to develop contents for training, for uh, sharing of experience, uh, which are centered out uh, the centers of interest and preoccupations of our industrial partners. And uh, so, yeah, we, 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 we've we been also uh, adding to the mainstream uh, HPC computer uh, an Atos QLM quantum emulator uh, already since three years ago for our partners to start exploring uh, the promises of quantum computing as early as possible ahead of using uh, uh, effective hardware they can use this emulator. Quick sample of applications, not surprisingly, you have uh, Safran doing uh, production runs for uh, their uh, either a helicopter or aircraft engine. So this is an example of how they uh, manage to reduce uh, energy consumption, pollution, noise, or whatever is very important today in this area. We have examples of uh, Valeo simulations in, uh, in uh, automotive, uh, aerodynamics from Ariane, uh, maybe less common is uh, what uh, L'Oréal is doing. You know, they do less and less, uh, if not uh, not at all now, um, uh, uh, experiment on animals, which is nice. So they do more and more simulation and modeling. Uh, and here it's about modeling hair, uh, which is a mix of uh, complex physics, mechanics of uh, articulated systems together with optics and, uh, and chemistry. Right? It's, it's quite uh, fascinating. And uh, another example is in Iris in, um, in pollution. Uh, monitoring, air, air quality, air pollution. So, our model clearly is not a business model, it's a partnership model. Right? This is the original aspect of what we do. We have multi year renewable contracts with partners interested. Each partner has a share proportional to what they put in the basket, the financial participation. This is a contribution based on total cost of partnership. Like I said before, we know how to compute exactly uh, what the operation uh, costs. And uh, this is a very fair system, not for profit, uh, and very interesting for partners. Uh, we provide, uh, like I said, very secure environment um, uh, management and flexible resource usage, less slightly different from, from, from research. The same rules apply to all the partners, and this works fairly well, and it seems everybody is happy with that. Um, I would like to insist that our CCRT center is meant for users with significant recurring needs in production, okay? It's not, uh, I would say, on demand. It's not for uh, SMEs, for small companies that have uh, to offload some, uh, some burst need. No, it's uh, really people that have recurring plant needs production for industrial com com computations, and they are here to stay and, and do their uh, plant uh, work with very uh, industrial uh, standpoints. Okay, so some uh, users uh, at TCRT use uh, our um, the system for their main production runs. Huh? They have most of their computing power is at TCRT, but some other partners have significant computing power on premise, and they also have CCRT as a complement for other kind of computational resources. So it's quite mixed. Uh, we, we have uh, examples of, of different configurations. And governance is typically uh, very classical, two committees, a uh, user committee and steering committee. And as a quick summary and takeaway, again, more or rather than a business model, we, we have a partnership model. And we co-fund, uh, industry co-funds like, I don't know, 70, 80% of the, of the machine. 
together with uh, CEA, which uh, uses the rest of the machine as uh, recurring resources. We provide state-of-the-art equipment, but like Bastian said, uh, I think it's a similar message, uh, the industrials are like robust and stable solutions. So we tend to uh, offer them um, machines or options for technologies that have been already proven on the defense or research side. And uh, uh, every two, three years, my colleague Christine collects uh, inputs and funding from the industrial and she buys a machine that makes everybody happy, the 20 partners. So we pull infrastructures, equipment, know-how, best practices, etc., from CA to partners, but also we foster and encourage the exchange of experience directly between partners through workshops, etc. And we are forcing and preparing new paradigms uh, anytime. So uh, about HPC, database science and engineering, or more recently, uh, quantum computing. Thank you. That's all for me. Th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Philippe. We are absolutely on the dot. So I think we have uh, 20 minutes now. Uh, so uh, so Maria, uh, if that's okay with you, I'll start the questions. Uh, we start seeing some questions already coming in the in, in the in the chat window. So I will start taking them uh, uh, one after the other. So if I can request all the attendees attendees to please provide your questions. Uh, so I will start uh, taking that up. So uh, let me start with this uh, interesting question from. Uh, uh, my ETP colleague uh, Guy Lonsdale. So the question to Alison is as follows. So many government funded HPC centers have a problem with providing pay per use access to industry for real production use. How does Hartree avoid potential complaints along the lines of publicly funded resources used for commercial purposes? I think it's a very, very good question, I think, personally. Uh, Alison, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, um, can everyone hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, um, it, it, it is an interesting question. So I think the first thing to say, as I, and I'm sure this is, is common across all the centers that are speaking, is that the vast majority of usage by companies is not only on is not on a cycles only basis. Most companies that interact with HPC centers are also interested in the expertise. So that when we go out and, and form a contract to work with them, it typically involves um, paying for a number of people and for a number of cycles. So, so we do it as a package. Um, to answer Guy's question more particularly, um, we're a government organization the computers that we get funding for, we only get funding for the capital. So as a centre, it's up to us to generate the revenue to operate the computers. We have, have a very good finance department. The finance department look at all the costs and on a regular basis, they will, they will tell us what we have to charge for the services. Um, we are also audited by the National Audit Office in the UK um, to ensure that we are not breaking any European or UK rules. So we don't set out to be the cheapest. Um, that's not really the basis on which HPC centres work. Um, if it's more advantageous for a company to work, say, uh, with commercial cloud, then we will do that. We don't insist that people use our facilities, um, but as I say, it is carefully regulated and we have to be aware um, of all these regulations and make sure that we, uh, we meet them. So you need to collect information. I think that's, that's um, you know, if you want to avoid um, problems, you need to understand your costs, you need to understand the usage um, and, and you need to, to price accordingly. Thank, thank you, Alison. I think uh, we have more questions coming in now. Uh, so the next question is a question from uh, Colin Moray to Jean-Philippe. Can, can Jean-Philippe elaborate further on how CEA found the partners? Did they reach out to industry or were they approached? Okay, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a bit of, a, of both, I will explain. Uh, when we started in 2003, it, it was a natural move because we had uh, 
historical partners, mostly from energy area, not surprisingly, which is a main activity at SEVA, but also from aerospace to some extent. Huh? We've been in touch with the energy aerospace sector for uh, <laughs> dozens of years since uh, the 50s or 60s in, uh, when it comes to, to, to HPC and simulation. So we, we started like this and we quickly understood this model was good and could be generalized. And so more partners came in naturally because they were in our ecosystem. But progressively, there was some good reputation and fame. So more came in. And at some point, we started becoming proactive. And, uh, and then we approached a number of partners uh, more proactively. And uh, I would say it was, I, I don't have the figures in mind, but uh, it was like a 50% score. Like we, when we approached uh, five, 10, uh, companies or organizations, uh, usually all of them uh, eventually became partners. And uh, we are not, well, we don't want to develop uh, ourselves uh, just to become bigger. No, it has to be relevant. Very often it does make sense because we have some natural relationship in terms of R&D or, or missions. Huh? And then uh, last point is not surprisingly, uh, we tend to work it's not rigid, huh? but we tend to work with French companies for very simple reasons. It's proximity, it's a co common culture, it does matter. Huh? Uh, a, a British company will tend to go to Artry, I guess, a German company <laughs> to HRS, and a French one to CCRT because it's more natural. Huh? Uh, voilà. I hope this uh, brings some uh, clarification. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. So then we have another question from uh, Mark Bequen. I think this is probably a tricky one, but uh, let's see uh, how it goes. So in Europe, I think the question uh, possibly for uh, for all of you here is, so in Europe, they say the average computing power made available to industries is about 20 to 25%. So there's some computing power available to industries with uh, some exceptions. Uh, this total amount, uh, Mark says, is not fully used. Uh, so basically, some supercomputing centers have less than 5% really used by industries, Mark says. So would you have some thoughts on what's the real capacity that's being used by industry? Uh, what's the real capacity not used today, despite being made available to industries? I think it's uh, probably a tricky question, but maybe uh, you can provide some thoughts on um, industrial usage of computing power and uh, the what percentage is used uh, you know from in, in your centers so any, any thoughts so maybe we'll start with uh, bastian so you want to yep. try and uh, take this i try, I try to take this challenge let's say um so so in gen in general um the, it depends uh, let's say if you talk about supercomputing centers um i see many supercomputing centers which don't have industry on it at all because they have legal legal issues here. If they have a dedicated machine, it's a different thing. So if we talk about 5% utilization, it's also, it also would be interesting to see, okay, how big is the machine? Let's say that way. We had a system here which was like seven petaflop and let's say some 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 capabilities um, with one and a half years ago and we had 10 to 15% utilization. We have now the new system which is, let's say, four times bigger um, and we have, let's say, 10 to 15 percent uh, utilization. You can compare this, and even industry doesn't doesn't speed up that much at the same time. So, um, realistically saying, I think from my viewpoint, even 5 percent is already a good number if if you let's say have the environment for them to use that. And 5 percent is then usually an average. So we have peak times of industries using it for two three months, and probably then not using it for for the rest of the year. Um, in general, still, I am okay. Okay, why is it so difficult? So he, he clarifies his question. Uh, so difficult to have more adoptions, especially, especially from SMEs. It's a, um, so SMEs is a tricky, tricky thing because, and I think Jean Philippe said this quite, quite uh, clear also. It's a German, German industrial partners prefer to go to German centers in that regard. And for SMEs, it's even a local one. So I, if I have a guy here on the Swabian Alp uh, and wants to do something, he wants to know the people which are behind us from an SME. First of all, he, he even has to be convinced that he has to spend money on this because he has no clue. 
partially about the things. He has probably one guy who's capable of using Linux in his uh, his company. Um, he, he needs to understand the, the uh, really the, the benefits, and that's why we have these these um, activities like the CCOS, etc., to bring it to them. So once you have them, th them there, they still want to have a trusted environment. So these guys even want to visit us from time to time to see it here. So they are very local, and you have to establish a, a relationship of trust, etc. Um, it's uh, I recently recently quoted uh, the, the the movie Field of Dreams where they say if you build it they will come. It's quite opportunistic to think I, bu I build a system and industry will stand there and just wait for me having the system here to run it. It takes a long time to really uh, push this forward. And one thing we are also working with these these international competence centers now is trying to again optimize the interactions with the with the industry, especially SMEs, to really understand also from other countries how they go to them, how they, they approach them, how they make them interested in using it, etc. This is a non-trivial thing. As I said, 1996 HLS was started. It was not like that uh, we had a, a 40, 40 SMEs waiting for us to do that. It took a while. It takes a long time. It's a reliability. And if you really have issues like security issues, etc., it might be over uh, quicker than you expect the whole thing. So it's really something where you careful, establish trust. And you have to have certain mechanisms, especially for the SMEs to use it. Still, I see a growth in Europe happening here. Now I stop talking because the time would be over and others would be unhappy. So shutting up. Yes, Alison, go, go for it, please. Go for it. Go on. Okay. So so it is an interesting question. And um, I think we know that SMEs require more support. I think there, there's several factors. Um, you know, as I said at the beginning of my talk, we have a hundred people, but six or six or seven business development people whose job it is to go out to companies and to try and understand the problems. So if you have a company that comes to you and says, I've heard about AI and I'd like to use it, then that's only a starting point. So you really need to understand what the benefits will be for the company. One of the other things we found is it's, it's important that the company has some sort of a digital transformation um, policy or strategy. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult for them to see how they're going to implement the answer. So we need to work with a range of business advisors and HPC people. The other factor, I think, is that it's much easier to support SMEs who are in your own locality. So the initial programs that we've had at Hartley, one has been in, in the Liverpool city region, which is about you know, an area around about our centre. There's another one um, for one of the neighbouring centres. And if we're to expand across the whole of the UK, um, we probably need to set up hubs in a range of different places. So, for example, Scotland is well covered by EPCC. Um, the area in the northwest is well covered by Hartree, but we need to expand out. And I'm sure the same is true of other centres. Um, so it is a complex thing. I think we need to be better at understanding what sort of packages these SMEs want to use. It's not always about reinventing the wheel. We have to be able to take solutions that have been developed um, and reuse them across a whole range of industries. We're also trying to work more closely with sector bodies to understand if we can develop solutions which can be applied across a whole sector um, to minimize the costs for individual companies. Um, and we also work with big companies to see what we can do with their supply chains to increase the number of SMEs who are able to work with them. So it's a very complex problem. I think that things are beginning to move in Europe, but there's no easy answer overnight. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Jean, Jean Philippe, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, briefly, back to Mark Derquen's first question. Uh, for us at CCRT, it is not an issue. It is a non-issue because we buy and install exactly what the users are expecting. We collect input. They only have to size, define the size of the problem for the next one, two, three years. We collect the funding. And then we buy exactly what they want. So they pay for that uh, ahead of uh, using it, more or less, uh, if you will. Uh, we, could, we, we check they have the fair quota that uh, they paid for, but they have exactly what they want. And it's flexible. If they want more, 
we can upgrade the system, not uh, within 24 hours, but in a few weeks or months, and it is done on a regular basis. More partners coming in anytime, or partners wanting more resources, we add one, two, three racks, which, which are uh, both as options of the, of the contract. We tweak the fat tree interconnect proof, and it works. And so no waste, no, no problem. And the nice uh, side of what we are doing is that some uh, advanced users, they can also benefit from the proximity of the research machine on which there is a price system uh, with a few percent of the machine available for uh, open R&D so-called uh, resources made by price. And some of the users do that. So they do some one-shot big challenge price style on the Joliot Curie system. And uh, aside this, they do regular production, which is more conservative, on the CCRT with the, the sizing and exact specification I've described. SMEs, briefly, I think we fully agree this is the tr trickiest aspect of this uh, uh, of this industrial HVCUs because it's not a monolithic question. Uh, CCOS is an excellent example of the necessity of intermediate structures in the ecosystem. Computing centers, it's, it's at least my credo and personal opinion. Huh? Uh, computing centers, the public ones like, like us, or uh, government organizations or public research centers or computing centers, they cannot do everything for everybody. So we do things that will help SMEs to some extent, but it's not necessarily the main mission of everybody. So when it comes to SMEs, we tend to try to work with partners or send the SMEs to some of our partners and try to stimulate the ecosystem to help them. For instance, at uh, we use uh, partners such as Terratech to help the SMEs develop more awareness uh, and willingness to do HPC. And then we, we believe strongly that uh, some more private partners are needed uh, to be intermediate players in the system, like CCOs or service providers or consultants or whatever, for SMEs. Great. Thank you. Uh, so this is just uh, another question. I think we covered some of the SME points and uh, you raised uh, some interesting thoughts about uh, education and training as well. So one last question uh, from Mark. So Mark, I'll go to your other question since we covered some of the H SME uh, angles. There's an interest to make HPC centers compliant with GAIA-X and other sovereign trends in the EU. I think that's a comment from uh, 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 Mark, so uh, Bastian, you have your hands up, so yeah. if you want to say something. So, simple and quick answer, yes, and HLIS is currently uh, setting up uh, the German Gaia-X node for, for HPC. In the frame of the Gauss Center and from I think that we're doing something here. Great, that's good enough, thank you. So, uh, we, are, we are interested, uh, we are observing, and we'll see. And and I saw yeah. maybe did we skip this question from Mark on? Uh, uh, yes, there is one question. Yes, so, yeah, uh, I was sure. hoping it's to come issue. back for it. And yes, we have a number of yeah. a number of pro of uh, projects and initiatives that uh, tried uh, either nationally or at the European level to tackle this. We have uh, Bastian mentioned uh, centers of uh, of competence, Castile, uh, EuroCC. Uh, Couple, I would say, is, is coordinating. We had uh, the initiatives in France with uh, with Terratech, Gensi, uh, which are part of the National uh, Competence Center with the OHC. Huh? But also in the previous years, we had other initiatives that are were typically meant to really focus on educating, raising awareness, evangelizing people, because for SMEs, very often it's also a question of culture before. Uh, going deep into uh, HPC and all the nuts and bolts. Th thank you, Jean-Philippe. Yeah, same question uh, to Alison and Bastian is, uh, what do we do to educate SMEs and engineers about more about HPC? And uh, there seems to be a lack of understanding of it. So Alison, uh, I think you were about to Yeah, I, th I think, I think it, it's really about getting people to understand that HPC is a tool, you know. It, it doesn't need to be portrayed about something that's very difficult as something very difficult. A number of the companies that we're working with um, are also looking, you know, looking for us to implement front ends to make it easier for people to access. So, for example, um, we work with some companies 
who have everything packaged up in, in a nice environment, which we run in our system, um, which means that people don't need to SSH in or to understand complicated techniques. We have um, life sciences projects where we have interfaces to Jupyter Notebooks um, for scientists who are working with us. Um, so, so I think it's all part of a wider thing about accessibility and demystifying SME, which is uh, HPC for SMEs and for other people. Um, and I think we as centres for too long have, have gone on about how, how difficult and how elitist it is. Um, I think we don't have time to go into it, but I, I think there's also um, an equality, diversity and inclusion aspect yeah. for this, because making it sound very complicated um, puts perhaps puts off women um, or people coming in from a less conventional background. So it's in everybody's interest to make it as open um, an environment as possible. Yeah. Th thank you, Alison. Uh, yeah, I think we just crossed the time now. Uh, and just do you have any final comment on this, Bastian? No, okay. Not for the sake of time. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, then uh, I guess we can close the question since we're just over time. So I give it uh, back to Maria. So thank you very much for everyone uh, from my side. So Maria, it's uh, back to you. <clears throat> thank you. Um, before we close, uh, thank you again, Alison, Bastien, and John Philippe for the presentation. And thank you also, Sai and Pascal, for your help today. Uh, I would like to ask all of you to please fill in a short survey once you leave the webinar. Uh, it would help us to improve the future sessions. Um, this year we will have two more webinars, one on sustainability and usability and the other one on quantum. You can already see the dates and register via these links. Uh, here are also our contact details. Your suggestions, questions are very welcome. Uh, thank you for being with us today and I wish you a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye bye.